Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Brannigan. And today I'd like to do an examination of your thyroid. What's your name, please? Dermot. Dermot. Nice to meet you, Dermot. So the first thing I'm going to do is just inspect you, so if you just sit still there for a second. First, remember the general observations that apply to any system. Apply these specifically to the thyroid exam. Is the patient well or unwell? Comment on the patient's alertness, as hyperthyroidism can result in a patient being hyperalert, and hypothyroidism can result in a patient being lethargic. Comment on their colour. Comment on the patient's weight, in particular any signs of recent weight loss or gain. Note the patient's hydration status. Is the patient breathing comfortably, or are they dyspneic? Note any signs of steroid use. Note any obvious lumps or fullness in the neck. Note any scars, especially around the neck. If present, note the characteristic frightened faces of hyperthyroidism, the full lethargic appearance in hypothyroidism, or the delirium of myxedema madness. Look for equipment or devices that are attached to or surrounding the patient. Note the location of the patient. Note any signs around the bed. So the first thing I'd like you to do is put this pillow underneath your hands. Just put your hands out there like that. After a closer inspection of the hands, where skin, muscle and nails are assessed, okay. could you lift your hands up a little bit? Ask the patient to raise their hands off the pillow and check for fluctuance of the nail bed. Could you put your two index fingers together like that? Two nails of your index fingers together like that. Assess for shamrock sign. Okay, put your hands back out like this again, please. Place a sheet of paper on top of each hand. This accentuates the fine tremor seen in hyperthyroidism. Assess the palms for palmar erythema and palmar crease pallor. Feel the palms for sweaty, warm palms, which is seen in hyperthyroidism, or cold, dry skin, which is seen in hypothyroidism. Check for peripheral sensory loss in the distribution of the median nerve, which is seen in carpal tunnel syndrome. And if you could close your eyes and just say yes when you feel it. Yes. 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 Okay, turn your hands back over again. Yes. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to check your pulse now. Assess the pulse for rate, regularity, and volume. Check for a collapsing pulse. Okay, and would you be able to put your arms out like this? Assess power in the shoulders to screen for proximal myopathy. And don't make a push up. And don't make a push up. Okay. Uh, finally, on the arms, I'm going to check your reflexes. If you're supporting them at all, it won't really work. So I get you to just lay your arm like that over there. Okay. Now just tense your muscle a bit so I can feel where the tension is. That's perfect. So you just relax there as fully as you can. Assess reflexes in the upper limbs, which may be accentuated in hyperthyroidism or diminished in hypothyroidism. Just fully relax it. Ensure that the limb being tested is fully relaxed before attempting to elicit reflexes. I will lift it up. Let me take the weight of your arm. Let me fully support the weight. Some patients may need to be told multiple times before they fully relax. Ensure that the relevant muscle group is fully exposed so that the reflex will be seen. Perfect. Right, let me take, fully take the weight of your arm here. Just 
move it onto your face. I'm just going to observe for a second around your eyes. Perform a closer inspection of the face, noting if skin is sweaty and warm or dry and cool. If there is obvious weight gain or loss, or if hair is dry and coarse or falling out. There may be a yellowing of the skin from carotenosis. Note slow speech, hoarseness or tongue swelling. Focus next on the eyes, looking in particular for observable signs of hyperthyroid ophthalmopathy, such as lid retraction, exophthalmus or hyperthyroid facies, ptosis. Observe also for eye signs of hypothyroid disease, such as periorbital edema, xanthalasma and loss of the outer third of the eyebrow. If present, comment on complications of exophthalmos, such as corneal dryness, ulceration or chemosis. Assess the optic nerve for damage by checking visual acuity bilaterally. I just want to check your vision first of all. Could you just cover up one eye? Um, if you could reach beneath the letters above the green line. E, D, F, C, Z, P. That's perfect. And now if you could cover up the other eye please. And could you read the letters below the green line? F E L O P Z D. Perfect, thank you very much. <coughs> so what I want you to do now is keep your head perfectly still and I'm gonna get you to follow the tip of my finger with your eyes and I'm gonna trace a pattern. Tell me if at any point you see double. Check the muscles of the eye by examining cranial nerves three, four and six. Check also for lid lag Just keep following my finger with your eyes. Okay, that's perfect. Um, I'm going to just have a look at your eyes from the side now, if that's all right. Stand up and observe the patient's eyes from the side and from above to better see exophthalmos if present. While standing, examine the patient's neck. Ask the patient to slightly flex their neck to relax the sternocleidomastoid muscle, making palpation easier. Examine closely for lumps and prominent veins and scars. If a lump is detected, describe it in detail using the memory aid 3S, 4T and 3C. Palpate for the thyroid cartilage, moving down to the cricor cartilage and to the thyroid isthmus beneath this. Palpate to the left and right of this. Ask the patient to stick out their tongue. Ask the patient to swallow. If possible, provide a glass of water to facilitate this. That's perfect. Assess the lymph nodes of the head and neck and the salivary glands. Percuss over the mediastinum to assess for retrosternal goiter. Okay. I'm just going to have a little listen over your thyroid with my stethoscope. So can you take a deep breath in and hold it? Yep. Auscultate over the thyroid gland to detect hyperdynamic blood flow. Okay, that's perfect. Now, I'm just gonna put my fingers on your neck here. It can be a little bit uncomfortable. Just trying to bear with you. Check for tracheal deviation. Okay. And now can I get you to put your hands straight up in the air like this and just hold it up there. Toes. Ask the patient to elevate their arms to check for Pemberton sign. Does that feel okay? Yeah, fine. You don't feel any trouble with your breathing, do you? No. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna have a look at your legs. Let's just take that pillow away from you. Inspect the legs for signs of weight loss or gain. Sweaty or cool dry skin. 
and pretibial myxedema. Inspect the toenails for anecholysis. It is at this time that you would assess the reflexes of the lower limb. Okay, now finally if I could just get you to stand up, but put your hands like this first, and now stand up. Finally, ask the patient to stand up using only their legs to assess for proximal myopathy. Okay, that's everything. Thanks very much. Thank you, Doctor.